Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mungli. So one of the things that I tell to my students in the class is um, eat, sleep and uh, do biochemistry. Anyway, so today I am going to explain you on galactose metabolism and uh, while explaining galactose metabolism, so I will be explaining you on classic and non-classic galactosemia cases. So the galactose as you might be knowing that you get it from lactose. Lactose is a milk carbohydrate. Lactose is broken down into glucose and galactose in our intestine by lactase enzyme. So once the galactose part of lactose is absorbed, so let's see what happens to that galactose. Galactose is predominantly metabolized in a liver. So how it is metabolized, so we have, and also it is metabolized in other tissues too. So galactose is, in, it is converted into galactose 1-phosphate and this job is done by galactokinase enzyme. And this galactokinase enzyme, it uses one ATP and release it as ADP. So the terminal phosphate present in ATP is used here to convert galactose into galactose 1-phosphate. Now, phosphate is there here in the galactose attached to the first carbon. Now, what happens to the galactose 1-phosphate? Galactose 1-phosphate will undergo a reaction catalyzed by galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase and that is GALT enzyme. So, during this process, Galactose 1-phosphate, it will be combined with UDP galactose and it will be released as glucose 1-phosphate and UDP galactose. Note that in this reaction, UDP from UDP glucose, it will be attached to the galactose and you get UDP galactose and glucose takes phosphate from galactose 1-phosphate and it becomes glucose 1-phosphate. Now what will happen, so your galactose is in the form of UDP galactose. Now what happens to this UDP galactose? UDP galactose will be converted to UDP glucose. This is a reversible reaction done by 4 epimerase enzyme. So your UDP galactose is converted to UDP glucose. Now this UDP glucose will get into a, another reaction in another galactose metabolism. So then it will be converted to glucose 1-phosphate. So the galactose is converted, UDP galactose is converted to UDP glucose by 4' prime epimerase. And UDP glucose in lactating mammary gland specially, it can combine with galactose to make lactose. Lactating mammary glands synthesize lactose from by using UDP glucose and galactose to make lactose. In that sense, lactating mammary glands needs 4' prime epimerase function because with the 4' prime epimerase, UDP glucose, UDP glucose can be converted to UDP galactose. Anyway, now the glucose 1-phosphate that is released or that is coming from galactose here, so glucose 1-phosphate can be converted into glucose 6-phosphate. This job is done by phosphoglucomutase enzyme. Now what happens to the glucose 6-phosphate? It all depends in which condition the person is or in the uh, which condition the galactose is undergoing metabolism. So if the glucose needs are there in the blood, so glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose by glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. Now this glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme, it is located in the endoplasmic reticulum and uh, about glucose 6-phosphatase and its deficiency disease I have already explained in Van Gerke disease there. Now if the energy needs are there so glucose 6-phosphate is it's getting into glycolysis reaction. So like this your galactose is converted to galactose 1-phosphate, galactose 1-phosphate is converted to glucose 1-phosphate and glucose 1-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate and then glucose 6-phosphate can be converted to glucose especially in the liver and kidney or it can go into glycolysis reaction.
now let's move on to see uh, disorders that are associated with the galactose metabolism so the deficiency of one of the two enzymes that are important in galactose metabolism and that is galactokinase and galt enzyme so if there is a deficiency of galactokinase consider that there is a deficiency of galactokinase enzyme so what will happen so there will be accumulation of galactose galactose is elevated this galactose will accumulate in the blood and later it will be accumulated means it will appear in the urine so it means galactosemia and galactosuria can be seen and also some of the galactose here it can be converted to galactitol galactose can be converted to gal galactitol galactitol is a osmotically active compound so the disease that you get from deficiency of galactokinase is called as non classic galactosemia and in non classic galactosemia one of the sign that you see is bilateral cataract and this is the only sign that you see here in non classic galactosemia along with the appearance of galactose in the blood and urine and why you see bilateral cataract because galactose is converted to galactitol which is an osmotically active compound and that will be accumulated in the lens and it imbibes water and thereby cataract will form so that's the one of the sign that you see there in non classic galactosemia and that is bilateral cataract now let's see what happens if there is a deficiency of galt enzyme galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase enzyme if it is deficient so what will happen so there will be accumulation of galactose 1 phosphate now because of this what happens so initially galactose is converted to galactose 1 phosphate and later galactose 1 phosphate is not undergoing further reaction here because galt enzyme that is galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase enzyme is down because of this there will be accumulation of galactose 1 phosphate problem with this is galactose 1 phosphate it is trapping all the inorganic phosphate that is present there so as you can see atp is converted to adp now if the adp need to be converted back into atp so in the electron transport chain you need inorganic phosphate most of the inorganic phosphate phosphate it will be trapped here as galactose 1 phosphate so it means there will be overall deficiency of inorganic phosphate pool in the cytoplasm and what's the problem with that so if there is a deficiency of inorganic phosphate in the cytoplasmic pool some of the reactions that needs inorganic phosphate like atp synthesis by atp synthase enzyme needs an organic phosphate so atp synthesis will be decreased so there will be overall lack of atps in the cytoplasm now if the inorganic phosphate is needed for glycogen breakdown by glycogen phosphorylase enzyme now the glycogen phosphorylase it incorporates an organic phosphate and break glycogen and release glucose as glucose 1 phosphate that reaction will be down so it means glycogen breakdown during fasting condition it will be decreased and also note that gluconeogenesis under fasting condition it needs atps to convert lactate into glucose and alanine into glucose now conversion of lactate to alanine and uh, uh, sorry lactate into glucose alanine into glucose needs 6 atps it means here it, there will be gen, uh, decrease in atp levels it means gluconeogenesis is also decreased so that's another process why glucon uh, there will be hypoglycemia there will be fasting hypoglycemia in galactosemia that is classical galactosemia deficiency of galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase enzyme it will give rise to classical galactosemia in classical galactosemia you see the deficiency of fast uh, hypoglycemia I means uh, there will be hypoglycemia under fasting condition why hypoglycemia under fasting condition first reason for this is inorganic phosphate pool is deficient because it is all trapped in galact as galactose 1 phosphate atp levels are down because of this gluconeogenesis is not supported and since inorganic phosphate is down 
so glycogenolysis glycogen breakdown needs inorganic phosphate so glycogen breakdown is down and also there will be overall deficiency of glycogen in galac classical galactosemia patients because when the galactose one phosphate is accumulated here and this galactose one phosphate it is going to inhibit phosphoglucomutase enzyme so uh, let me show you phosphoglucomutase inhibition here so the galactose one phosphate that is accumulated here it is going to inhibit this enzyme that is phosphoglucomutase enzyme so this phosphoglucomutase enzyme is inhibited it means glucose one phosph conversion of glucose six phosphate into glucose one phosphate so that particular process which is a reversible reaction here so glucose six phosphate into glucose one phosphate so you need to note that glycogen synthesis needs glucose one phosphate and that glucose one phosphate it will be later converted into udp glucose molecule so generation of udp glucose will be decreased in the deficiency of galt enzyme because galactose one phosphate is going to inhibit phosphoglucomutase enzyme and the glucose six phosphate is not converted to glucose one phosphate and the later glucose one phosphate is not converted to udp glucose and the, the conversion of glucose one phosphate into udp glucose it will be done by udp glucose pyrophosphorylase enzyme so overall what happens the deficiency of udp glucose leads to decreased formation of glycogen so overall classical galactosemia patients they they will be having less glycogen stores in their liver and skeletal muscle and then gluconeogenesis is not supported glycogen breakdown is glycogenolysis is not supported so overall these patients they will have fasting hypoglycemia now why they will have cataract formation another sign that is seen here in uh, classical galactosemia is cataract formation bilateral cataract why do you see bilateral cataract it's because galactose one phosphate that is accumulated here so over a period of time when the atp levels are down at this time so conversion of galactose into galactose one phosphate is also accumulate means decreased it means there will be accumulation of galactose and this some of this galactose is converted diverted into galactitol formation and that galactitol especially in the lens it will be accumulated and give rise to bilateral cataract that's why you see bilateral cataract in classical galactosemia cases now why do you see jaundice in classical galactosemia and jaundice is because as you can see here the udp glucose formation is decreased in classical galactosemia why because accumulated galactose one phosphate is inhibiting phosphoglucomutase enzyme when the phosphoglucomutase is inhibited glucose six phosphate conversion into glucose one phosphate is decreased and when the glucose one phosphate is decreased so you get less amount of udp glucose here because that has to be synthesized from glucose one phosphate when the udp glucose is decreased it means that leads to decrease in udp glucuronic acid and note that conversion of unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin needs udp glucuronic acid and now there is a deficiency of udp glucuronic acid in uh, classical galactosemia patients because of this conjugation of bilirubin do not go on so there will be elevation of unconjugated bilirubin in the blood and that's why you see hyperbilirubinemia and jaundice here and the kind of jaundice that you see here is an indirect jaundice where there is elevation of unconjugated bilirubin now why do you see mental retardation in classical galactosemia mental retardation is because and uh, 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 sorry so there is no definite explanation for why there is mental retardation in classical galactosemia and it can be so many metabolic reactions may be going on and also there is overall lack of atp here so that can also lead to neurodegeneration decrease in the nerve metabolism and leading to mental retardation as anyway so there is no definite cause here that is known why there is mental retardation in classical galactosemia but the observation is 
majority of patients with classical galactosemia they will have mental retardation okay so these are all the signs and symptoms that you are going to see in classical galactosemia and non classical galactosemia and the biochemical explanation for both all these signs and symptoms so just to recap non classical galactosemia is because of deficiency of galactokinase enzyme and the only sign that you see there is bilateral cataract along with elevated levels of galactose in the blood and urine classical galactosemia is because of deficiency of galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase enzyme that is galt enzyme major signs that you see here is fasting hypoglycemia mental retardation jaundice indirect jaundice and that is and bilateral cataract along with elevated galactose and in the blood and in the urine this is all about galact galactose metabolism so i hope uh, this video has helped you to understand galactose metabolism and uh, classic and non classical galactosemia if you like the videos so please give a thumbs up and if you have any comments any question on this video or how to improve this video or the video is uh, any comments on the video and also if you have any other question other than classical galactosemia including uh, classical galactosemia or galactose metabolism or any other metabolic pathways that you want to learn please put that in the comments below for regular updates you can subscribe to my channel so that you get email notification whenever the new videos are uploaded thanks for watching and have a great day